whole thing was over, uh, the university just in interrogated the student. How did you get shot? Who took you back? Edgar Huang. What was he doing there? <laughs> he was shooting photos. Where are the photos? Okay, what can I do? Give me the photos, okay? So I had to uh, turn in some of the photos, and I want to make sure that no one from my university was in the photo booth. And also, especially, I turned in the photos that I shot in the evening, which uh, sometimes you can hardly see who is who is there, you know. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. So that's why I, sh I turned in some. They didn't know how many I shot. I, t I shot a total of forty rows, uh, uh, forty rows, and uh, you can you can do the do the math. The thirty six. Uh, frames each row and the 40 rows, that's a lot, you know, so I just turn it in some. And uh, so with this calligraphy, my photography, all my hobbies just uh, ruined me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> ruined me, okay, yeah. So that's what happened. And uh, yeah, they, they just, uh, I, I didn't finish my story actually. Yeah. So in 1992, uh, I was found out that uh, uh, I wrote this, I shot the photographs, and you know, what kind of a crime you have committed, okay? So they decided to put some like a uh, punishment uh, statement uh, in my personal uh, file, which would go along with me to a personal record, which is like a, your social security number, you know? It would go along with me wherever I, I, I went in those days. So I said to myself, I said, sorry, I'm fed up with living in this, living in this country. I, I will get out of here. And so I decided to do. And in those days, I, were, I was uh, still teaching in the university. But at the same time, my side, uh, more my job was teaching GRE and the TOEFL in uh, what is not now called New Oriental, uh, mm -hmm. Xin Dongfang. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was teaching there. And uh, you know, I was teaching other kids uh, these things. So I taught myself as well. It's just like killing two birds with one stone. And, and I did, I, I took GI, I took TOEFL, and I got money from UC San Diego, and I, I, I came, uh, came to this country. So I always said uh, to my friends that, thanks to the Communist Party, uh, they sent me to the United States. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you, yeah. Okay, so the, uh, the students' uh, movement attracted thousands and thousands of uh, ordinary citizens and uh, you see them coming in different ways. Uh, these are uh, teachers uh, from colleges and these are just uh, regular citizens uh, from Beijing and you see like the trucks and the buses and the on buses, on vehicles and off vehicles, people were just united. They wanted to uh, see a new China in those days. A new China. Uh, they were not like cynical as people uh, in China today are. No, they were very sincere. And this is the intelligentsia uh, from uh, China, uh, the same thing. And these were just like young and old. The people were all united. They wanted the same thing. Uh, the press, the people, daily people even came out to go against their own editorial uh, in, in, in April, on April 26th. Um, so yeah, the people, daily people, came out to go against themselves. That's very uh, ironic. And uh, so young uh, capital, uh, young reporters from the capital, uh, firmly supported student movement. Uh, this picture, I love it. Uh, I, I love it. It's not something like a, I like it. I love it. Why? Look at these young women. Just like a ray, the, the, the ray that heads up high and uh, says strike. Simply just strike, and uh, we're on strike. We we're supporting the students, and it was a sunny day, and it rem always reminded me. When I saw this photograph, it always reminded me of the Puccini's music. Da, 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 dee, dee, da, da. Even though the meaning is very different, but the music is just like so bright for that fitting the uh, context of that day. And even Buddhists came out to support the students. They were not supposed to be there. But they were. And Hong Kong came out to support. Uh, Western influence? Oh, that's bad. No. Okay. <laughs> Everything is Western. Yeah. And the people, as I said, in coming different ways, like, you know, horse wagons, yeah, bicycles, and uh, wheelchairs. Yeah. And uh, where are the police? No. In those days, you don't see any police. 
in, in Beijing. And the people didn't, in the least, like those thieves, they stopped the work. They didn't steal anymore. Everybody, those uh, people who tried to, like a, a private merchant, individual merchants, uh, they were supposed to be on the bottom level of the social uh, uh, ladder. They were looked down upon, and they, those people came out to send the food, to send the water to the students and to people, anyone uh, who was involved. And uh, the students were in charge of traffic uh, regulation. Surprisingly interesting, you know. So what happened to the police? The, they, they, went, they went home. They hiding? No, they went home. Nobody wanted, you know, to come out to, to go against the, the students. Uh, oh. Even though they couldn't, they couldn't uh, publicly say, I support you. Oh, so they are really in support of the students, so they just kind of like stay. They couldn't say that. I see. So they just went home, you know, we don't want to do anything here, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and nobody, you know, steal in those days. And the, tra uh, hum the traffic was good. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you, if you know Chinese, uh, there is an idiom called the Quan Bing Jie Bing. All people are armed. That's what uh, the Chinese Communist Party want people to be. But this one is, is the same, it's a pun. It's, a, it's the same, same uh, the only, uh, Word that is different is this word. G means like a block. Yeah, block. Prevent. Uh, all people will prevent the army from entering Beijing. That's what they were trying, trying to do. And the naive citizens were so naive to the point that they thought that I'm just put this kind of uh, lamp pole in the middle of the road and then the army couldn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Okay. So this and is in May. This is in May. Okay. Uh, late May. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Okay. 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 And uh, in those days, I was just like moving around all around the city, and uh, so uh, students and the citizens, you don't know who they are. Uh, they just sent out the leaflets like this. I collected many. I still have them. And I just shot them into, uh, put them in photos now. And this one is saying like, hey, the citizens of the Republic, uh, my comrades, uh, the students on hunger strike, the com uh, Communist Party members, and the army, army uh, uh, soldiers, uh, and also the, uh, the soldier, uh, you know, the officials, so and so. We want you to know what happened in, in Beijing, one, two, three, four, they just tell you. Uh, try to tell you what's going on. And uh, all those leaflets, you know what? Those soldiers were like in teen, they were teenagers. They were in 20s or 30s at most. They came to Beijing. They didn't know what happened. They, most of them were farmers, uh, farmers' uh, sons and daughters. They didn't know what happened. They just came in. And then many, many of these leaflets were sent to those uh, soldiers for them to see what's happening here, uh, to brainwash them, whatever you call that. And uh, so many people went there to talk to the soldiers. I was there as well, even though I didn't talk. Uh, but they tried to talk the soldiers out of Beijing. Even the soldier went to, officials went to talk. The local official went up to talk to the soldiers. Hey, don't come in, OK? Hey, just get out. Uh, that's my late wife. Uh, she was there to talk to the soldiers as well. You don't want to come in, and uh, that's uh, she. She uh, took the negatives to those countries so that all the sixth division uh, is made possible. And so, uh, some of the students uh, in our in our school in Beijing built this goddess of democracy. It was uh, in the Tiananmen Square for <coughs> only three or four days only three or four days. Um, this is like the early June, probably uh, June the 1st. And uh, the crackdown happened on June the 3rd, the evening of June the 3rd. So it was there for th yeah, three days at most. It was facing the Tiananmen Square, a mouse image. And that's pretty much toward the end uh, of the movement. Um, Sad, for, fortunately, 
And unfortunately, I was not there on that night of killing. And uh, so that night, uh, that after, late, uh, late afternoon, on uh, June the 5th, uh, June the 3rd, I'm sorry, on June the 3rd, that afternoon, I was teaching uh, GRE in, uh, in, 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 in a, a school, a uh, local school. And I, went, I felt hungry, I went home. And uh, my uh, wife said that uh, you shouldn't go because to Tiananmen Square. I was, went back, I was back to take more you know, uh, cameras and, and, and film so that I could go to Tiananmen Square that evening to shoot. And my, my wife said, no, don't go. It's too dangerous to go tonight because the government already uh, broadcast the warnings and so on and so. So because I was hungry, I was stopped by my wife and to, to go uh, from going to Tiananmen Square. So fortunately, I got my life. And uh, so that's why I came, came come to this country to share uh, what happened. Uh, unfortunately, I lost the historical opportunity to shoot uh, photographs in, on that evening. So uh, that's pretty much the end. And uh, a sign in the People's University of China, uh, where I got my master's degree in photojournalism, uh, ever, the first one, uh, they, people said, the people are going to uh, put, you, put you on trial. The people are going to put you on trial someday. So that someday uh, is, not even it is not even there yet, uh, 26 years after the crackdown. This is 26 uh, anniversary. Uh, this is a, uh, this is an, uh, in 2009, let me just make it a little bit bigger. Uh, how many of you know about the Spirit and Place? It's a local event that is held every year, uh, organized by uh, IUPUI and also uh, another local organization. So they sometimes ask uh, local people to write something in about a, a topic. And 2009 was about, you know, um, uh, I forgot the, the theme already, but they were just sending a, a call out. And uh, so they, 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 they contacted me and, uh, do you have a story to tell? Uh, you know, they tried to look for celebrities, you know, famous people, celebrities. I, I'm not a celebrity, I'm not a famous person in any sense, but I have a good story to tell. They say, yeah, that's all I want. Uh, the, the woman said, okay, so I'll, okay, I'll roll one. And I wrote my experience of coming to this country, how I came to this country, and how I uh, treasured the moments. And uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read the whole thing, even though it's uh, short, but let me show you uh, the very last paragraph, uh, at least. A caged bird can fly freely, but only in its cage. My, um, oh, by the way, let me just, uh, uh, let me just uh, tell you uh, the story very quickly. Um, I was not there on June 4th, so I got my life, and I didn't, didn't lose my life. And uh, on June the 5th, I went to Tiananmen Square one more time, and then I saw <coughs> line after line after line of, uh, you know, like one after another, <coughs> burned tanks. Tanks were burned, Tra trolleys burned the trolleys, burned the buses, burned the trucks. They were just all over the places in, along Chanan Boulevard. Uh, it's a Chanan Boulevard, it's by Tiananmen Square. So I just uh, uh, climbed up on top of a trolley and I began to shoot uh, photographs toward the Tiananmen Square uh, area. And I heard the machine gun came up and I just <laughs> so, uh, uh, came, came down to avoid being shot. And uh, so I went further uh, toward Tiananmen Square. I wanted to just test myself and so how far I could go, you know. And uh, I know that there would be, uh, Tiananmen Square was blocked anyway. I went, and so I went to a nearby hospital. It's called a Fuxing Hospital. And when I went there, I saw like names. I don't know how they got the names. I don't know, people who died. And uh, so I don't really care about the names, but I wanted to go inside to see by myself. And I went inside. The whole floor, the first floor, body, one after another. It's just like a morgue on the, on the first floor. And uh, that was my first time ever, you know, that that I see so many dead bodies in my life. And I shot photographs, many of them. You don't you don't see any here. Let me tell you why. So when the whole thing was over, the police tried to 
capture the photographs, to identify who, when, where, to do what, you know? And I was just afraid. I was really afraid. You know, I, I told you I'm not a hero. And I, I was afraid. And I wanted to like hide photographs, uh, ne negatives. And so I just uh, put them away. Some of them were in my, uh, you know, my my parents' uh, residence. <coughs> and uh, so, still today, even today, uh, it's a mystery. I don't know what they did. Anyway, they sold some of the cabinets to uh, farmers nearby. And uh, some of the photographs were in one of the cabinets, which I hid. They didn't know. My parents didn't know. They sold them. That's why all the photographs, the negatives, that batch that I shot on June the fifth were all gone. You know. So, so that, so, but I shot them and I even printed them, and all, even those photographs were gone too. So, but anyway, it's a memory that I have, and uh, because of that experience, I. You know, I told myself that I, uh, I, I don't want to live in, in this country anymore, and it's no fun to to. Uh, why? Because I'm a big mouth. I like talk. I like to talk, just like I'm talking to you right now. You know, and uh, there is a camera here uh, documenting everything, and uh, I know that you will not like but send this whole thing to to the Communist Party. It's okay if you, if you do, you know. But you know, I'm a big mouth. I like to talk, and so that's why I love this country. Uh, I, I want.